that could be causing my accuracy issues. Hi all, my name is Lee, welcome to the channel. So today I just wanna talk a little bit about the consistent accuracy of my mill. I've had it a few weeks now, I've been playing around with it and I get quite inconsistent results. Sometimes it's absolutely perfect on uh, accuracy. Other times it can be off by maybe a couple of tenths of a millimeter. That's still not the end of the world, obviously. That's still a lot better than a lot of the scare stories I've, I've seen and read online. But I wanted to try and find out why it would be so good sometimes and at other times quite inconsistent. And I've come up with three different things and sort of a workflow to make sure I set the machine up before I start cutting. And I've managed to get some very, very good results from it. And I wanna show you what I've come up with. And it's three very basic steps. But using these steps, I've really got the accuracy down and more importantly, the consistency of that accuracy. So let's take a closer look and then we'll jump on the mill and I'll show you what I mean. This is my simple three-step program to a better milling life. The first thing I try to do is I don't crank the vise too tight. Now in a previous video, I actually made myself a vise wheel and that's so much better for putting torque on the vise because I don't overdo it. The handle's way too big for the size of vise I have and I think I was putting too much pressure on it which caused it to sort of lift and warp slightly. The second one is when I lower the Z axis down, before I lock it into place, I actually raise it back up and then use the fine feed quill to bring it back down again. For some reason, that seems to straighten it out a little more. And then that brings me to the, the final thing I do. On all three axes, X, Y, and Z, depending on what order I tighten the locking screws also affects the accuracy. But I think the best thing I can do now is let's go over to the mill and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm pretty happy with the results of this vice so far, but that's because I've found the main issues that I've been having. So after I cleaned it up, it seemed to work really well. Uh, but then I noticed occasionally it, when I was tightening it, it was sort of twisting and turning slightly and raising. So I took some measurements and it is just as simple as not over tightening. So now with the wheel, it's easy. I'll just give it a, a firm but fair twist, but I don't go mad with it. I don't go over the top and that is more than strong enough to hold it in. So that's number one. Make sure you don't over tighten the vise. Just tighten it as tight as you need and that should stop the sort of warping in the, in the mechanism of these cheaper vices. The second tip I have is when I raise or lower the head, I make sure that when I lower it, I always twist it back up very slightly before I, I lock it off. And that just seems to take off the slack and I've noticed that also helps with the nod issue I've been having. The final tip is what order I lock the table straight and more importantly, the Z axis. So I've got the locking screws here what I found is on the Y axis, if I actually, sorry, on the X axis, if I turn the left one first and then the right one, that seems to give me better results. So I think there's some slight movement when you twist these screws and it can put the table slightly out. So that's my routine for the Y axis. I turn the left lock first and then the right lock. Not too tight, just give them a snug turn and that seems to work perfectly. And that's also the same with the x-axis underneath. So I've got the two locks underneath. What I've found that works best is if I twist the rear one first and then the front one, that also seems to give me more consistent results. So finally, let's take a look at the z-axis because that's the most important one. So most of the weight is obviously in the head of the mill and that's pulling downwards and it's causing some slight nod. And also, if you actually have a look, if I tighten this locking nut, uh, the top locking nut for the Z axis, watch the draw. So I get 0 0.025 movement roughly every time I twist it. And that seems to be pulling it straight when I do that. But I, don't, I, I found that going over the top, 
doesn't work either. So what I've found, the best thing to do is just give it a, a relatively firm push and then do the bottom one and then that seems to straighten it out and it works okay. So all that's left to do is I'll just put some stock in the vise and then I'll take a cut and we'll take some measurements and see what it looks like. So the first thing is I'll get the Y axis into position so it's about centered on the cutter and then I'll lock the Y axis off. I lock it with the rear lock first and then the front one. The next thing I'll do is I'll lower down the head but just when I get very close, I actually bring it up very slightly. And now I'll lock the top lock first and then the bottom one on the Z axis. Now this gives me a lot more consistent results. So now we can start this off and then I'll just use the fine quill dial to dial it in and we'll take a cut and take some measurements. So as you can see, the finish is really good. Uh, it's barely rubbing on the back at all. Occasionally it might just rub a little bit, but it's definitely not cutting. Uh, that's the back of the cutter as it comes across after making the initial cut. So I'm pleased with the finish on what I get on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure across each of the corners because with the face mill, what you'd expect to see with a, a big nod issue is uh, I'm thinking that one edge will be actually thinner than the other because the face will be cutting at an angle and making one side of this slightly thinner than the other. So if I measure this, what I'm hoping is most of these corners all match up with each other and I know that it should be pretty straight. So let's have a go. I've got this micrometer here. It's not the perfect tool for the job because it's actually got flat faces. I believe I should really have round faces to measure against a, a flat surface, but it's the most accurate device I have. So uh, I'll try and use this. What's that 0.329 of a millimeter? That corner also appears to be 0.329 of a millimeter. I mean, that is excellent. Let me just try that again. Did I just get lucky? 0.328 of a millimeter there. Right, so now I'll flip it over to see if it's consistent across the length. Okay, so that's 0 0.340. And on this edge, 0 0.343. So I'm really only about a hundredth of a millimeter out across the length, uh, but between the corners, uh, I'm virtually into single digit microns, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, that it, <laughs> I think I've got lucky again, because um, it's not usually that good, but that is the sort of accuracy I can get if I'm lucky. Uh, and using that milling machine, as long as I dial it in the way I've showed you, I seem to get real consistent results with it. So I'm really happy with that. So hopefully 
you, uh, anyone with a new milling machine, before you start worrying about trying to tram it and uh, uh, put shims in it, it could be more simple just to get a bit more consistent accuracy. Using those simple procedures, I get much better results. So hopefully this will help any new mill owners out there. Uh, don't get too worried if it doesn't seem as straight as you'd like. It's unlikely that you're gonna need to shim it at this point. And my experience has been really good and with these workarounds, everything seems to work okay. So just as a quick summary, number one, don't over tighten the vise and that seems to help a lot for me. Number two, uh, the Z axis, I always find it's better to move it slightly upwards after lowering it and that seems to straighten it out a bit. And finally, number three, see if there's a certain order to twist your axis locks when you twist them because that could be pulling the table in and out of shape. It's more important with the Z axis, as you saw, the weight of the head, if you actually turn the top locking screw first, it seems to straighten it out more. And I've actually noticed quite dramatic results just from doing that in that order. So do the top one first and then the one below it. So hopefully these simple tips will help you if you're a new mill owner. If you've got any more advanced advice for me, please let me know. I'm a beginner and this is just the things I've found. But thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.